Whereas a, a religious person is always calculating. What is the minimum I have to do in order to get to heaven? I don't want to miss heaven. But what's the minimum I have to do? What's the minimum amount of money I must put in the box? What's the minimum amount I must serve the Lord? What's the minimum number of services I must go to in a week to be in good standing in the church? What's the minimum I have to do to keep a good testimony in the church? It's always this minimum, minimum, minimum. It's a mark of a religious person. Imagine if you had a wife like that. You say, what is the minimum I have to do for my husband and what's the minimum I have to do? You'd have a miserable married life. And I want to tell you that Jesus is not looking for a wife like that. Let me tell you that. He's not so desperate that he's looking for a wife like that. But a spiritual person says, Lord, I've got only one life. What is the maximum I can do for you in this one life before I leave? What is the maximum I can do for you in this one life? What is your attitude in that simple word, minimum or maximum, you can discover. You get a scan and see whether you're a religious person who people think you're a wonderful Christian. But in your inner attitude, I'm talking about your daily attitude, not when you come here on Sunday morning. In your daily life, if your attitude is, oh, I have to do something for God. Uh, you know, otherwise I have a bad conscience. I have to read the Bible for a few minutes and I have to do a little bit. I've got to give, of course, I've got to give a little money for God. You're not a bride. You're a servant looking at the clock to see is it time to go home. You're not a son. You're not a servant. You're not a bride. You're a religious person. And it's good to face up to that. I want to tell you something that God's really not interested in your money, first of all. He's interested in your love, in your heart, your affection. And he wants all of that. 